In this video, we're going to be replacing the strut boot on this 2011 Honda Odyssey. All right, we're going to remove the wheel. We're going to use a 22 millimeter socket. All right, to start removing our strut assembly, we have to remove our brake line. That's going to be a 12 millimeter. And we can remove that, push that aside. I'm going to take all the precautions we can not to damage this line while we're removing our strut. Behind there, we have our speed sensor, our ABS sensor cable. I'm going to remove it from this bracket by just pushing forward, working that out. And if you follow your speed cable around, you have a clip here that we're going to remove with just a pair of panel tool pliers. I'm just going to squeeze that clip and pull it out of the bracket. And we can set this aside again, make sure we do no damage to this cable while we're removing our strut. Okay, and other things connected to our strut are going to be our top sway bar link. It's going to be a 17 millimeter. In our case, backed right out without having to support the center section. If you need to support the center section, go ahead and put an Allen head in here and a wrench to back off your nut. Or what you can also do is from the back side with a pair of locking pliers, hold this flange here while you spin off the nut. Now that this is out, what we're actually going to do is just put our nut back on. For two reasons. One, we don't lose it. And two, we can protect our threads. We can push our link aside. Okay, we have two bolts connecting our strut to our knuckle. It's going to be 22 millimeter. We're going to back up this side with a wrench. We're going to use an impact on the other side. And what we're going to do is take the nut off but leave the bolt in temporarily. Do the same thing to the bottom. Okay, what we're gonna do now is push one of our bolts out. And we're just gonna use the top bolt to stabilize the knuckle from spinning too far forward. You don't wanna damage the axle by allowing that to happen. At this point, you're going to want to support your lower suspension underneath your control arm. What you want to do is just touch the control arm and give it another half crank up. Now we can remove our top bolts. All right, now here we are on the top of the vehicle in the engine bay. You can see our plastic cowl here. To get access to your three nuts on the top of your strut, you have two options. One is hidden behind this access door. You're going to use a small pocket screwdriver or a pick pop this forward. Now you can see there are three nuts for your strut in here. You may be able to get a small or a shallow socket in here and remove those three nuts. When it comes to reinstall, it might be a little bit more difficult to get everything in position through this little access hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this top cowl right off, which includes taking your wipers off as well, and we'll show you what it looks like with a little bit more access. Okay, so to remove our plastic cowl here, we're gonna to have to start by removing our wipers. To get to our wipers, we have these two covers over our wiper arms. They're held in by these two push pins. I'm gonna push the center in, and then with a panel tool, remove the clip. Now we can remove the cover. So slides backwards or rearwards in the vehicle into place. So when you remove it, you're going to pry up the front and pull forward. All right, so same process. Push the pin. Pry up your clip. And then pop up the front. You might actually just be able to push the cover off. Okay, so here we have our covers for our bolts holding our washer arms in place. We're going to use a pick tool, get under here and just lift our covers. 
You can see our, our nuts here on the studs. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so our nuts holding on our wiper arms are gonna be 16 millimeter. So we'll back those off now. Okay, for a little bit easier access to remove our wipers, we're gonna lower our hood, but not clip it into place, not close it. Just lower it till you hear your first click. Now we can reach over our hood with a little bit more access. We're gonna lift this arm, almost like we were cleaning our blades. We are going to work our wiper right off. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on the driver's side. We're gonna flip up our blade, or our arm, and we're gonna get under here and just walk the arm right off. Now what I like to do is just straighten these back out and set them aside. All right, now we can put our hood back up. Actually what we're gonna do is open it all the way up and lock it into place. Okay, so at this point we're gonna to have to remove this clip here holding our cowl to the metal part of the body. We're gonna use a panel tool for that. Now your vehicle would have one more clip in the center here and one more clip down the other end. Our vehicle didn't come with them, so we won't be removing them. Once you have those removed, you can see that your cowl's pretty loose. From here, what you're gonna need to do is find this rubber piece at the end that goes around your hinge. And we're gonna kind of squish that rubber piece inward and almost fold it over on itself. What we can do is pull our cowl forward. Okay, on this side, here's our rubber piece. We're gonna roll that over on itself, and we're gonna pull our cowl forward. What we're gonna have to do is pull it forward and up to clear our wiper studs here. So forward and up. Now from here, we can take this whole cowl right out of the vehicle. All right, so our 14 millimeter nuts on top here. We're gonna use an impact gun with a swivel on it. In this area here, be very careful of nipping your windshield. If you happen to put any damage right here, you can crack right into the windshield. So take caution there. Okay, so at this point, the only thing holding our strut in place is the pressure upwards from our jack and this one bolt. So what we're gonna do is remove this one bolt. Now at this point, what we can do is just lower our suspension slightly. I'm gonna give yourself enough clearance on the top to get the bolts out. Now you can see our strut and everything is pretty well loose. What we need to do is work our strut off of the knuckle. Try not to do any damage to your speed sensor cable or the CV boot underneath here. Your strut is kind of heavy. It will want to go straight down onto that boot. So what we're going to do is just continue to work our strut out. We're going to compress the spring, put a new boot on it. We're gonna open up our compressor here. I'm gonna try and keep it as level as possible. That thing looks good. They look pretty centered. Start compressing. All right, so what we've done is just compressed our spring enough to just before the point where everything's free. 17 millimeter socket, see if we can break that nut free. What we wanna do is back it off most of the way. Now we're gonna compress our spring. So what we're gonna do here is just put a jack stand underneath our strut. I'm gonna put a two by four underneath here. What this will do is just help us act as another set of hands for when we take our nut off of the top. 
will come to the top with a 17 millimeter wrench. And a number six hex. And continue to remove this nut. Okay, now at this point we have our nut, we have our top plate, we have our bottom plate, we have our bushing, we'll set that all aside. Now what we're looking to do is take out the boot and bumper on the cartridge. So at this point now we can take our cartridge straight out can remove our jack and our piece of wood, lower our cartridge, and the top cup. For this particular setup, we're going to need to spin this top plate here. I'm going to spin it counterclockwise until it rotates off the top spring. And you'll see, this is what we were rotating off of the top spring. Now from here we can remove this boot, peel it right off of this top cup. Okay, so here's our strut cartridge. We have a top cup, it slides right off, set that aside, and we also have our bumper, will also slide right off. To install your bumper, go ahead and slide it right on, press it down, follow it up with your cup, slide that on top and onto your bumper, and then we can just pull our bumper back to meet up to the cup. Okay, so we have our boot and our top plate. We're gonna reattach our boot. You can just see the lip here that we're gonna push our boot onto. Make sure it's seated nice and tight. So then we can go ahead and drop this down onto our spring. We're gonna spin it and rotate these tabs around our spring. So you have one, two, three tabs, and then a stop, which is where this end of the spring will go. So what we're gonna do is take our one, two, three tabs and start rotating. We're gonna open up the first one to help us get over the spring and just start rotating this into position, making sure it goes through those plastic or rubber boot tabs. We're gonna spin until it stops up against that spring stop there. Feed our cartridge up into the boot. Make sure your boot doesn't get bound up. We're gonna look for the bottom to sit into place, which is going to look like that. This, this tab here is gonna sit into the tab area here. Gonna make sure our boot and center pin look good. I'm gonna put a little helper underneath here to hold this. Okay, with our strut cartridge in position, what we're gonna do now is start reassembling the top. First, we have our bushing, which will go on the top. And then we have our top plate. and our top cup and our nut. At this point, we should be able to let go and now we can start working, tightening down the center and the nut itself. As you're tightening up, your Allen and the, or the nut at the top here, you want to make sure that the bottom plate stays lined up. Once we're tightened up and everything is in position, we can start to decompress our spring. Now from here, we can remove our strut from the machine. 
and we can reinstall it to the vehicle. Okay, so our new strut, bring it into the vehicle. We are going to send it all the way up into the open space we've created up top. And we're going to bring it around our speed sensor cable. All right, from here, once you've made it past your speed sensor, you are uh, probably got the hardest part down. It's not damaging that wire. Now we're going to get our strut and our knuckle lined up together. What you don't want to do is let your knuckle rotate too far forward. You don't want to separate your CV axle on the inboard side. So at this point, when we're close, we're going to take a small pry bar and get it ready. So when our strut does line up, we're ready to basically pin the hole and keep it into position. Okay, so with that pinned, what we're going to do now is raise our strut and our knuckle so we can get our top bolts into position. So your top plate with the three bolts or the three studs here aren't exactly equal. So on the new strut, when you go to the top, you're going to have to spin this to seat it in the right orientation so your bolts or your studs line up. So that's what we're going to do before we raise it up. Once you have your three studs lined up, up top, we can raise our suspension to where our studs poke through the top. And once we have our suspension raised all the way to where our strut is as high as it's going to get up top, we can thread on our three bolts. Okay, with our suspension or our strut all the way up, we can go ahead and put our nuts on our studs. These are locking nuts. So you're going to want to put them on once. And these nuts are going to be a 15 millimeter. We're going to snug these up. We're not going to try and hammer them in. All right, because our strut has a damper plate here, we have to torque these down to 44 foot pounds. If you do not have a damper, it's going to be 51 foot-pounds. This is your damper flange here. We do have it. It's 44. All right, with our bolts tightened down, we can install our cowl cover here. On the bottom side, you can see you have some clips that run all the way across. These clips are going to clip into your windshield. So when we install this, we're going to align best we can our sides and what we're going to have to do is fold in these rubber sides here on both left and right to get around our hood hinges and have to get it up and over our wiper arms and our wiper studs before we go and lock it into position we'll get the other side in. Same thing on this side, we can fold our rubber corners in themselves. Now at this point, we can push down to make sure we're all the way down and push towards the rear of the vehicle. That'll clip into place. We can fold our rubber back around our hood hinge. And we'll do the same on the driver's side. And push back. Okay, at this point, we're going to replace some clips. Our vehicle only came with the one, but we have a couple more. Okay, at this point, if you've accessed your bolts or nuts through here, we can return our cover. Clip into place. From here, we can start on our wiper blade. Okay, so on the wiper arm shaft here, you will see that it is grooved. There's going to be a clocking position inside the arm that we're going to have to get 
so our wiper sits back down on the windshield in the correct park position. We're going to bend the wiper up as if you were changing the blade. We're going to lower the arm into position where we think they sat previously. And then we'll lower the blade to see how close we got. I think we're right there. If we need to make any adjustments, open up our blade or bend back our arm again. We'll raise it off of the stud and we'll adjust and put it back down. Try again, but I think we're in great position. We'll keep the arm bent. We will thread on our nut. Again, with our 17 millimeter socket, we'll tighten these down. All right, so after you've got your nut tightened down, we can go ahead and put our cap on. And then to finish this off, we'll take our cover, slide it back into place. Once you have your cover on, we can install our retaining clip, push the center to lock it. You can lower your wiper arm down. So here on the passenger side blade, you have two options. You can install your arm bent, like we did on the driver's side, locate it, put your nut on, and then lower. Or, with the hood open, as far as it'll go, you still can't lower this arm. It contacts the hood. So your other option is to put it on open, locate your wiper blade in the correct park position, find your wiper stud, and then press right where this bend is until you have it clocked into position and thread in your nut. And then with your 17 millimeter socket, tighten that down, take your cover, put it back on, and then lock it in place with your plastic retaining clip. Okay, so now that we're down here, what we're gonna do is install our two bolts holding our strut to our knuckle. Now this is gonna be a lot of wiggling and lining up to get our bolt holes lined up correctly. So just be prepared to put in a little bit of uh, time and effort. What I'm gonna use is I'm gonna leave this small pry bar in the top hole and I'm gonna use a, either a small Phillips or another small pry bar to line up the bottom hole. We're just gonna try and move around our strut slash knuckle to get our bolt holes lined up a little better. Now it looks to me like our whole knuckle needs to go downwards. So we're just gonna lower our jack slightly like that. Now we look to be just a little too low. That looks pretty good. Let's see what... Now one thing you don't want to do is put your bolt in place and just hammer it through. You don't want to ruin the threads. You want to take the time here to get things to line up correctly. What we'll do here is thread on our nut. We're going to try and get these as tight as we can by hand. Now from here, we can take our top pry bar out and we can start working in the bolt on top. And we're just sticking through the other side here to help this out. We're just going to use our socket, basically thread it through. Now we can take our nut and thread it on. From here, what we want to do is get everything just barely snugged up. And then we're going to raise and put a load upwards on our suspension to mimic the weight of the vehicle. And we'll put everything suspension wise, our sway bar link and our two bolts back in place and tighten them down under load. Okay, so now we have our suspension under load. We're gonna use our 22 millimeter wrench on the front. We're gonna to torque these down to 129 foot pounds. All right, so now we can get our sway bar 
link back into place, take the nut off, and we can see because we've raised our suspension for our strut, we're just a little too high. So what we'll do is lower our suspension. And when you're doing this, you want to try and keep the ball joint inside here as straight and as centered as possible. You want this to be in the middle of its travel. Okay, so we're pretty close. We just need to go a little higher again. And because this link is in great shape, when we try and spin this 17 millimeter nut, the center doesn't want to spin. If it does, we'll have to get in here with an Allen or pinch it from the back with a pair of locking pliers while we tighten down this nut. Pretty sure that we should be able to snug this up and torque it down without having to get on the back or on the front. Okay, and our sway bar link's gonna get torqued down to 58 foot-pounds. What I'm gonna do is feel around the back to make sure that that flange isn't spinning. Well, flange isn't spinning, so we're in good shape. The center didn't spin, we're torqued down. Okay, now we can take our speed sensor bracket and clip, push this into place here. This is just gonna be a push to fit. Like that. And then if you follow this cable down and around, we have that one push clip. Just gonna push that into place. Our brake hose. This here is gonna sit inside here. And we're gonna reinstall our bolt. And that's going to be a 12 millimeter bolt. At this point now, you can lower your jack and remove it from your front suspension. Okay, now that we have our lug nuts snugged up and we have the vehicle down on the ground with some weight on the suspension, we're going to torque our lug nuts to 94 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.